To consistently win more points in pickleball, you need to understand the fundamentals of playing smart. So in today's video, I'm gonna take you through each part of the point and show you how to make the best possible decisions. This is the kind of video that I gave you a lot of cool things to work on the next time you go to the courts, so pay close attention. Helping me today, I have my sister Kennedy. And guys, arguably the most important part of scoring more consistently is how you decide to hit your third shot. So if you wanna learn how the pros do this, stay tuned and I'll take you through this strategy later in the video. First though, let's talk about serves. When it comes to serves, there's three main things you need to keep in mind in terms of scoring more consistent. And the first is targeting your opponent's weaknesses. So when you come out here, you don't wanna just hit the same serve down the middle every single time. What you wanna do is assess where your opponents are having more difficulty with your serve. So some common weaknesses you wanna look for are going deep to the backhand, throwing in spin serves like the screwball, and just using heavy topspin in general. So when you come out, you should assess what your opponents are liking and not liking and use more of what they're having trouble with. The next thing you want to keep in mind while serving is that you want to be safe, but not too safe. So ideally you get 100% consistency on your serve, but it's totally fine if every once in a while you miss one. Because if you're going hard and you're going for powerful serves, every once in a while you might miss, but generally you want to shoot for around 90% consistency. So I'd say go for 100% consistency when you're going hard, but if you miss one every once in a while, not the biggest deal. That's actually worth it because it'll make your opponent miss more returns and it'll make your opponent give you easier returns in the long run. So the trade-off of missing one out of 10 for more power and more depth is actually worth it. The last thing you wanna keep in mind is that even when you find your opponent's weaknesses and you find the right amount of power, you wanna mix it up. Because if I'm just going deep to Kennedy's back on at every serve, eventually she's gonna get used to it. So your topspin heavy deep serve is your default but you can mix it up with spin serves and occasionally you can throw in higher loopier serves too. This will throw off your opponents and it'll keep them guessing as to what you're gonna do. You can also mix it up by hitting it into different parts of the box. So if I'm going out wide to Kennedy's backhand, occasionally maybe I keep her honest by going down the middle to her forehand. In terms of how much you wanna mix it up, it's really just about what you can stay consistent with and what's working for you. And while getting the most out of your serve is super important for scoring points, having a rock solid return is what you really need to prevent your opponents from going on scoring streaks. And just like on our serve, there's three main elements on a return that we need to think about to get the most out of it. And the first is that you wanna optimize things for consistency and for depth. So the way that we do that is by reducing our chances of missing the return. The number one way to do that is hit the ball a little bit higher over the net. So you never wanna miss your return in the net. There's very little reason to do that. And the way you prevent that is by returning a little bit higher. And the second way you prevent that is by avoiding the sidelines and avoiding the back line. So we wanna hit deep, but if we aim for the you know, very back of the court, there's a chance we'll miss long. So I like to give myself a buffer from the back of the court and aim sort of in this region. And generally, the safest spot to hit your return is down the middle. So a lot of your returns should go down the middle. So what that looks like is this. You see Kennedy's getting behind the ball, got a decent height over the net, using that compact motion to get the ball to land around right here. And if your opponents are serving really hard, the next thing that you need to keep in mind is that things are gonna change a little. Mainly, you should increase your margin for error. So if Kennedy's serving at me really hard, I'm probably taking most things down the middle like that. If I go towards the sidelines when she's doing that, there's a lot higher chance that I miss. And when she's serving hard, my technique also needs to change. And the two main ways that that happens are one, I should have a firmer wrist because I don't want my paddle to wobble when it hits the harder ball. And two, I really need to focus on having a compact motion where I hit the ball in the center or the sweet spot of the paddle. Now on a side note, we're actually launching our new paddle soon. If you wanna pre-order it, head to our site. We spent a whole year developing this paddle, so that'd be the very best for your game. We designed it for the 3.0 to 4.0 level to have the maximum sweet spot which is why we're actually calling it the Sweet Spot Pro. And you can see here, we've actually identified the area on the paddle where the sweet spot is. So if you're ever playing, regardless of your paddle, you're always trying to hit the ball between these four red corners. Back to the return though, when Kennedy's serving hard, I wanna have that stiffer, more compact motion and hyper-focus on the sweet spot so I can still hit that ball clean without missing it. You can see in that shot, I actually miss hit it a little bit, but because I was holding it nice and firm, I still had a good reaction. If I was holding it looser, the paddle would have shook in my hand and it might've spun in my hand and I probably would have missed in the net. So remember, when they're serving hard, hold the paddle a little bit stiffer. The last thing that you wanna keep in mind though is that if your opponent is serving softer, you actually should try to go a little harder and you can sort of 
broaden where you're aiming. You don't necessarily need to go for the center. So if Kennedy's hitting really slow serves me, I could really attack it on the way in. So I, I need to hit the sweet spot still, and I don't want to have a super big stroke, but you can definitely take a little bit bigger of a swing and aim deeper in the court without risking missing the ball. And what this does is it just really makes their third shot more challenging. So to show you again, generally when people serve softer than me, I actually add a little bit of topspin because that also makes their third shot harder. So just know whenever you play someone, assess how hard they're serving to you and make the decision of whether you should have a more compact, stiffer stroke or a looser, bigger stroke where you go for a little bit more pop. The most important thing to think about though when you're returning is that you get into the kitchen quickly so that you can take control of the court from up here. And when you're up here, you hit what's called the fourth shot off of your opponent's third shot. This is super important and I'm gonna cover it later in the video. Before that though, let's go through third shots and how to get the most out of those. For that though, if you aren't subscribed to our channel, make sure to do so. By subscribing to our channel and liking this video, YouTube will actually start to recommend you all the best pickleball content. So make sure to subscribe if you're trying to improve. And thanks again for supporting the channel. When it comes to third shots though, there's a few things you need to know that'll drastically increase your odds of scoring. What you want to do is hit your serve and move immediately to where the ball is and get yourself in the right position. But what is the right position? So the next thing to keep in mind is that the right position on a drive is the peak of the bounce. So when the ball bounces, it reaches a peak, which is the top. When you're hitting a drive, you want to move to where you'll make contact with the ball right at its peak. So you wanna go straight to the highest point of that bounce because that gives you the best angle over the net to hit it hard. If you're hitting a drop, you wanna move right to where the ball will be falling from the peak. So you wanna hit a drop as the ball is falling so off the return, what that means is you move to where the ball will be falling. So as you see there, I didn't hit it at its peak. I let the ball drop a little. So if Kennedy was to hit the return deep, I might actually need to back up a little bit to get the ball at this point on a drop. So on a drive, you hit the ball at its peak. On a drop, you wanna make contact with the ball as it's falling. And it's your job to move there as quickly as you can after you serve. In terms of when to drop, you should pretty much go for a drop off any return that isn't short and high. So. The higher your level is, the more you'll go for drops. And if you struggle with drops, maybe you'll go for more drives even if you're farther back. So this is just a general tip. But if the ball isn't short and high after return, you're probably better off strategically going for a drop if you have that consistently. If your opponents have a good third shot though, you need to know how to defend that. And the way you do that is with the fourth shot. On the fourth shot, there's a very specific formula that you need to follow in order to have the most success. And the first part of that formula is that you never want to be reckless on this shot. So you should never really be aiming for really hard balls close to the sidelines, especially when your opponent is going for hard drives. So where do you want to aim the shot? Really, it's simple. You want to aim your fourth shots at the depth of your opponent's feet out to their sides. So really, if you're looking at both players, your targets are here, here, and here and they move back and forth with them. So if my opponents are at the baseline, my targets are going to be closer to the back of the court out to their sides. But as they start to move in, my targets become closer. So then my targets move in with them. And if they're at the kitchen, let's say they hit a really good drop and they make it all the way to the kitchen, I'm probably just going for a dink, right? If I go for a deep shot while they're at the kitchen, they can take it out of the air as a ball. So it's a really easy formula to fall and what it does is it prevents you from being reckless and it keeps you consistent. And the next part of the fourth shot formula is that if your opponents go for a hard drive, you want to be firm. And if they go for a drop, you want to flick. So if Kennedy drives it at me, I want to defend that with a compact, firmer motion. And if Jack goes for a drop, I want to use a flick. So I'm going to go for topspin there. Sometimes I might actually take a drop out of the air. So it's kind of like our return actually, where when they're serving slower, we want to use a more loose motion. Same thing applies to the fourth shot. You need to be really smart about how firm your wrist is based off what shot they give you. And the last part of the formula is you want to try to take the ball out of the air if you can. This applies more to drop. So if Kennedy's hitting me a drop and it's even in the kitchen, I'm infinitely better off leaning over the kitchen than I am backing up like this to hit it off the bounce. Sometimes you will need to back up if they hit a deeper drop in the kitchen, but the most you ever want to back up is one pivot. So if you're having to back up by taking multiple steps backward, that's a good sign that you probably could have taken that ball out of the air by leaning into the kitchen and you're selling yourself short by doing this. So you maximize your odds of winning these points by not getting yourself backed up because when you do, you give your opponent the advantage and let them move forward. 
So always try to take the ball out of the air if you can, and at worst, take that one pivot step back. And guys, if you like this video so far, make sure to drop us a thumbs up and click the like button below. Now though, we're gonna go over some points in real time where you can see everything we just went through in action. There, I didn't hit the hardest serve and Drew just really went for a lot of power on that return. It's tough to hit a third shot when people return that hard. So if your opponent serves soft to you, make sure to take advantage of it like Drew just did. There, Jack went for that drive at me. Luckily, I had my firm wrist though, so I was able to get my volley nice and deep to him. If I would have been loose there, I might have missed hit the ball and let them come forward. And that's another instance where having a paddle with a big sweet spot can be helpful. I'm sure you've been at the net before where your opponent hits a drive at you and it feels like the paddle's rotating your hand and you miss hit it. So as I said, we designed our paddle to have a massive sweet spot so that doesn't happen. So when you're playing with this paddle, it'll just feel a little easier to defend against those drives. Drew hit a really good serve there, but as I said, one of the most important parts of returning effectively is getting in quickly. So I should have been more ready before that serve so that I could have taken it and run to the kitchen. And I probably should have got that shot he just hit out of the air. Jack hit a really low drive there, but luckily I got a nice and deep, which made his next shot harder and he missed the drop. There, Jack actually did a really good job of hitting an aggressive return, which made it a little challenging for me to hit a third shot. I did a good job, though, so we were able to make it in. So there, I went for a really interesting serve that I call the banana serve. So I went down the middle, and I actually curved the opposite direction of a screwball. So I really am going like this. And the technique's important, but you definitely need to have a gritty paddle to be able to do that effectively. So as I mentioned earlier, you want to check out our paddle it's coming out in a few weeks it's awesome it's super spinny gives you a good amount of power but the main thing we optimized for was sweet spot so if you're someone that feels like you ever missed the center of your paddle and miss hit the ball go check it out and it could be the right paddle for you that was a good example of why you want to take that fourth shot out of the air i hesitated a little bit there but i got there just in time if i would have backed up there Drew could have taken control of the point and I would have been in a worse position. There, Drew went for a slower serve, so I put a little bit more pace on my return. He hit a good drop, but didn't come in very quickly, so I went for that target at the depth of his feet and it let me take control of the point. There, Jack did a good job of taking that ball out of the air which got Kennedy off the court and got him the point. And as a side note, this video is sponsored by playpickleball.com. This site's an awesome place to get info on getting into the game, finding coaches, and anything you can think of in the sport. And guys, if you feel like this video helped you, I highly recommend watching this next one that we have on footwork. Having better footwork is the easiest way to increase your consistency. So if you're looking for an extra edge, watch this.